Good morning, I welcome you to today's class. I believe we are in the same place, always the same. In our last class, we discussed on farm mechanization and we define mechanization as the use of machinery, the use of technology such as machinery, improved seeds, improved breeds of animals, variety of crops, and other agricultural innovations to make farming operation easier. We discuss on the advantages and disadvantages of farm mechanization. Some of the advantages are there's cleanliness in operation, then farm mechanization saves time. Farm mechanization also discourages bad cultural practices, such as bush burning. Also, we made mention of the disadvantages of farm mechanization. Some of the disadvantages of farm mechanization that we discussed are high cost of maintenance. To maintain the farm machinery required requires huge amounts of money, lack of spare parts. Also, the problem that the process problem that faces farm mechanization, lack of money, lack of capital lack of spare parts. Then finally we discuss the prospects of farm mechanization. What are the programs that the government should establish for the farmers so that can practice farm mechanization? Among them are agricultural cooperatives, tractor hire services, agricultural services, among others. For today's lesson, we'll be discussing on anatomy and physiology of farm animals. Anatomy and physiology of farm animals. Now let's see the learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, the student should be able to define anatomy and physiology, describe the digestive and circulatory systems, list and explain the major parts of farm animals. Now let's define anatomy and Theology. Anatomy refers to the structure of the body of farm animals. The farm animals comprises the, the body of farm animals rather comprises of various systems. The anatomy refers to the structure of the body of farm animals. The systems that comprises the body of farm animals. Now, physiology refers to the functions of the form and parts of the body of farm animals. The functions of these systems, the parts and organs of the body of the farm animals, the function of the parts and organs of the body of the farm animals. Now let's see the major parts or division of farm animals. The body of farm animals is divided into four major parts. We have the head, the thoracic cavity, the abdominal cavity, and the limbs. Now, the head comprises of the eyes, the nose, the brain, and the mouth. These organs can be found in the head region. Then we have the thoracic cavity. The thoracic cavity is the chest region. This is where the lungs, the heart, and the trachea are found. Now, the lungs and the trachea, they are used for respiration. And the heart pumps blood to the entire body of the farm animal. The abdominal cavity is the stomach region, where the stomach, the uterus, the bladder, ovaries, plain. Let's see where all the reproductive organs are suspended, where they can be found. And finally, the last division is the limbs. These limbs involve the four limbs, I mean, of, comprises of the four limbs and the hind limbs, and they are used for working by the farm animal. I believe you are following me. Now let's see the digestive system. For the purpose of this lesson, we'll be discussing the digestive system and the circulatory system for this week four. Week five, we'll discuss the nervous system, the reproductive system, and the respiratory system. Now let's focus on the digestive system of farm animals. Some animals they are grouped into two main classes. Depending on the nature of their digestive tract or alimentary canal. Number one, they are polygastric or ruminant animals. 
from the word holy, that is more than one, many. These are farm animals that possess four stomachs and they are called ruminants. They are called ruminants. They chew the cord. The other type of class is monogastric, monogastric or non-ruminant animals. These are animals that possess only one stomach. They do not relate. They don't chew the cord. Now let me share the this with you too. Polygastric or ruminant animals. We said they are animals that possess four compartments. Now let's look at these compartments of the stomach of ruminant animals. The four compartments are the rumen, the reticulum, the omasum, and the abomasum. Now, the rumen is also called the punch. It is large and is in the first compartment of the stomach. The reticulum is also called the honeycomb. It is the second compartment and it is lined with mucosa layer. This mucosa layer, that is, it, it contains mucus. This layer contains mucus and it is slimy, contains mucus. Then, in the third compartment is the omasum. It's also called many files. Many files. The omasum is the third and the smallest compartment. And the last layer is the abomasum. This is the fourth and the last compartment of the stomach. I believe you are following me. Now let me show you the stomach compartment from the oesophagus, from the, from the food we enter the mouth through to the oesophagus, then to the rumen, to the reticulum, to the omasum, to the abomasum here. Yeah. And these are other organs of the stomach, the pachyon, the small intestine, and the large intestine, stomach compartments of ruminant animals, what we have just seen. Now let's see that of non-ruminant animal, monogastric system. That is, non-ruminant animal has only one stomach. So the food enters the, the mouth, to the esophagus, to the esophagus, to the stomach, to the duodenum where digestion takes place. These are the other organs of the stomach too. The genium, the ileum, the canium, the large intestine, and the anus, where undigested food passes out. Now, digestion in ruminants. Digestion in ruminants. This is the food root or root rather of ruminant animal. The food enters the mouth, from the mouth to the rumen. From the rumen, the food re-enters back to the mouth through the esophagus. Then the animal will chew it properly, then moves to the rumen. From the rumen, re-enters the reticulum. From the reticulum to the omasum. From the omasum to the abomasum to the intestine then to the colon, and finally, the undigested food we have to pass through the anus. I believe you are following me. Now, let's discuss the process of digestion of food in ruminant animal. As you can see, this is a capsule of a cow here. Now, when a ruminant animal cuts the grass, it swallows it with minimal chewing. The animal will not chew the food properly, it's just with a minimal chewing. And the grass has stored, the grasses are stored in the rumen. Yeah, this is the rumen, rather. This is the rumen. The grasses are stored in the rumen. Yeah. Here in the rumen, the grass, the, the rumen contains microorganisms. And these microorganisms are the bacteria and the protozoa. The bacteria and the protozoa and the protozoa helps in the digestion of the cellulose, the cellulose in the grasses. Now, this microorganism secretes an enzyme called cellulase. It is this enzyme that digests the cellulose. Now, when the animal has finished filling the rumen with the grasses, the animal will find a cool place to lie down quietly. 
and by anti-peristatic movements of the stomach, the grasses pass from the rumen to the reticulum. Look at the reticulum here. Yeah. The grasses pass from the rumen through the reticulum and re-enters back to the oesophagus and the, from the oesophagus to the mouth. Now, the teeth of the animal, that is the, the, the molar and the premolar part of the teeth, is used to chew, to chew the food properly. So when you have seen a goat or a cow, where they'll just lie down and you will see the movement of their mouth, they'll be chewing the food properly. They'll chew the food properly by using the molar and the premolar part of the teeth. And this food will turn into a semi-liquid called the cud, C-U-D, the cud. Now, when the liquid, after chewing the food properly from the mouth, the food will move back to the rumen, move back to the rumen. Now, the food will now, in a liquid form, which is now the cud, C-U-D, will now move to the omason, yeah. From where it enters the abomason, yeah. After what have entered the abomason, this is where digestion and absorption of the food takes place. The, the digestion and the absorption of the food takes place in the abomason. And the digested food is absorbed into the bloodstream through the villi in the small intestine. This, this is the small intestine. The small intestine contains the villi. And the undigested food moves to the large intestine and to the anus where they will be passed out. I believe you understand. Good. Now let's see digestion in non-ruminant animal. Digestion in non-ruminant animal. This is the food route. The food moves to the mouth. From the mouth to the duodenum the duodenum to the small intestine and to the large intestine and finally the undigested food will pass through the anus to pass through the anus this is the digestive system of a non-ruminant animal and this is the pig as an example of non-ruminant animal now the food passed through the mouth of the pig as an example of non-ruminant animal and the food is chewed and mixed with saliva. The saliva in the mouth, while the animal is chewing the food, this is the salivary gland. The saliva in the mouth contains an enzyme called thialine. These enzymes convert starch to matos, and the food is swallowed. Now, when the food is swallowed, the food gets to the stomach. Yeah. In the stomach, there's a thick liquid called chimene. This chimene passes through the geogenome. Now, the food turns into a liquid in the stomach, and the, the liquid passes through the stomach to the geogenome, where digestion takes place. Now, lest I forget, in the stomach, there are two enzymes that are found in the stomach. The relin. The relin acts on milk, while the pepsin converts protein to pectone. Now, when the food that has been converted into a liquid substance called chimene gets into the duodenum, this is where digestion takes place. Now, the food is absorbed in the small intestine through the villi also. This is the small intestine through the villa here also, and the undigested food gets to the large intestine and to the rectum, and finally to the anus where it is passed out. That is just the process of digestion of food in non ruminant animal. I believe you are following me and you understand the processes. Now, let's see importance of digestive system. But one, it is the injection of food. The digestive system is the injection of food, that is the swallowing of food. Two, it promotes the digestion of food. 
is the air from the, the, the digestive system in the body of farm animals that makes digestion of food possible. Number three, it ensures the adoption of digested food. Yes, the adoption of digested food. Digested food that contains beneficial minerals in the body. That through the help of the digestive system, this is made possible. Number four, it aids the secretion of productive hormones and digestive enzymes. The digestive system helps in the secretion in the production of hormones and digestive enzymes. Without the digestive enzymes, digestion cannot take place. Digestive enzymes like cellulase in non ruminant animals. Then also we have the last one, it helps in ejection of undigested food. That is passing out, releasing of undigested food that the body does not need out through the anus. I believe you understand the importance of digestive system. Now we come to the end of digestive system. Let's see the circulatory system. The circulatory system. Circulatory system in farm animals involves two pathways. The preliminary circulation and the systematic circulation. Now, the preliminary circulation involves the movement of blood from the heart to other parts of the body. From the heart between, sorry, the, the, the preliminary circulation involves the movement of the blood between the heart and the lungs. Yes, between the heart and the lungs. While the systematic uh, circulation involves the, the, the movement of the blood between the heart and all parts of the body, aside from the lungs, apart from the lungs. I hope you understand that. I'll come again. The systematic circulation is the movement of the blood between the heart and the lungs. Why the systematic circulation is the movement of the blood between the heart and all parts of the body besides the lungs, that is apart from the lungs. Now, Circulatory system of a mama of mammalian farm animals. Mammalian farm animals. This is the head of the four limbs. It's how the circulatory system of mammalian farm animals looks like. And you can see the, this is at the lungs here, the outer, the liver, the intestine, the kidney, the eye, and limbs, and the and the hepatic portal vein, the vein and the arteries are shown here. Now, let me also show you the diagram of the pathways. This is where we are going to discuss in details the pathways. The circulatory system composed of the heart, the blood vessels, and the blood. The heart, the blood vessels, and the blood. Now, the blood vessels comprises of the arteries, the capillaries, and the veins. The arteries, the capillaries, and the veins. Now, the arteries, blood moves, moves from the heart to the body. That's the work of the arteries. F, the movement of blood from the heart to the vein. You can see the pulmonary artery here. The blood moves from the heart to the vein. Now, the vein helps to transport blood from the body back to the heart. The vein helps to transport back, this is the hepatic portal vein here. Yeah. It transports blood from the, from the body back to the heart here. Yeah. Now, let's discuss the heart. The heart is the organ that pumps blood and pumps blood to the various parts of the body. The organ, the, the heart is the organ that pumps blood to and from various organs of the body. And the heart has four chambers. The heart, the heart has four chambers. You can see this is the upper chamber. It has the upper chamber and the lower chamber. This is the right auricle, the left auricle, the right ventricle, and the left ventricle. The right auricle, the left auricle, the right ventricle, and the left ventricle. These are the four major chamber of the heart. Now let's see the the circulatory 
blood circulatory process. How the blood circulates. Now, from the body, the, 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 the blood moves to the right auricle here, then to the left ventricle here, from the left ventricle to the artery, then to the lungs, from the right ventricle to the artery, then to the lungs here, then from the lungs back to the veins. The blood will move from the lungs to all the veins. This is the pulmonary vein there, to the vein. Then from the veins to the auricle, the left auricle. You can see from the lungs to the left auricle. Then from the left auricle also to the veins, all the body parts of the body. Look to the kidney also, the eye limbs, the limbs where the farm animal used to work, and also to every other part of the body, the liver, the stomach, the intestine. Believe you understand the process. You can read more on this process on the um, on, on, on the uploaded on the uploaded notes on the internet. We have the comprehensive notes on that, and also you can also check your textbook. Now let's see the importance of circulatory system. Number one, it aids in its distribution in the body. Circulatory system helps to distribute in it to every part of the farm animal body, animal's body. It circulates nutrients to the body, both the macro and the my, micro, both the macro and the micronutrient. Farm as the circulatory system helps to circulate nutrients. It ensures blood circulation in the body. It ensures that the blood circulates into the body. It transports hormones and enzymes within the body. Circulatory system helps to transport hormones and enzymes within the body of farm animals. The farm animals have a complex body structure, unlike small, small animals that small, or small, small organisms that uses digestion as transportation system. But in complex organisms like farm animals, like mammals, circulatory system helps to transport hormones and enzymes. Also, it removes waste products from the body. The first step to remove waste products from the body that you wear, you ring, the sweat. And finally, it, con it contains white blood cells, which helps in combating diseases. Those white blood cells helps to fight diseases in the body. I believe you've been able to understand this lesson. We discussed digestive system of ruminant animals, digestion in ruminant animals, and the circulatory system. We discussed the customer compartment of ruminant animals. The rumen, the reticulum, the omasome, and the abomasome. Discuss how digestion takes place in ruminant animal and in non-ruminant animal. The four major body parts of farm animals, the egg, the, 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 the thoracic cavity, the abdominal cavity, and the and the limbs, the four limbs and the eye limbs. Please, you can read more on this topic from the other notes on the school website and your recommended textbooks, the essential agricultural science for senior secondary school and also exam focus. And also exam focus, you can read more on this. Thank you and see you in the next class. Bye.